Hello, I am David Griffin. At this moment in time, I am the Grand Master who is leading the Loyal Orange Association into the new millennium. Our Orange ancestors were an integral part of the founding of this great country. Based on the traditional values, of concern and consideration for others. Today, members of the Orange Association are active in many communities across Canada and raise hundreds of thousands of dollars for charities. The Orange Association of Canada is made up of a lot of community-minded people just like you. Canada, a unique country, a country that works, a country that has been named time and again as one of the best places to live in the whole world. Canadians are proud of living in a democracy. They're proud of the way Canadians help each other. A good education and health care for everyone are part of the Canadian way of life. Canada is distinctive and different. Different from England, the parent country, and different from the United States, its nearest neighbor. Nations just don't appear. They develop from the visions and ideals of forward-looking people. The organization that shaped Canada, which was there before there was a Canada, was the Orange Association. Their values and their ideals were stamped on this country by people who shared a way of looking at the world. Their history is Canadian history. They are Orangemen. They are Canada's true cornerstone. The principles of Orangism began with Prince William of Orange. In 1688, the majority of the British people wanted a Protestant king. Tensions grew between Roman Catholic King James Stuart and the British Parliament. King James, a strong believer in the divine right of kings, undermined the British Parliament. In frustration, Parliament sent a delegation to Holland and invited William of Orange, a Protestant prince, to come to England. William of Orange landed in England with only 15,000 men. William rode from the port of Torbay on November the 5th, 1688, to London without firing a shot. In what was to become known as the Glorious Revolution, Britain assured itself of a Protestant succession and a king who would cooperate with Parliament. King William's motto was civil and religious liberty for all, and he put it into practice. I'm Alan Finlay from Kitchener, I'm a master electrician, and I must say that I'm very proud indeed to be an Orangeman. My name is Doug Gilpin, I'm 24 years old, I'm a home automation technician, and I'm proud to be an Orangeman. I'm enjoying the Orange Order, but also this is our day. The 12th is the day when all sisters and brothers come out, and we're proud of the faith that we have. We are walking on the 12th of July in Toronto, and may it be a good one. My name is John Chalmers. I am a past Grand Master of the Provincial Grand Orange Lodge of Ontario West, and I am indeed proud to be an Orangeman. My name is Tom Barr, and I'm the County Master of Toronto. The 12th of July means to me that this is a, a chance for us to come out into the public and let people see what we are, what we stand for, and what our faith means to us. In July 1690, at the Battle of the Boyne in Ireland, King William and his soldiers achieved the final victory over James Stewart and his insurgent troops. Every year, all over the world, Orangemen celebrate this day with parades. 100 years later, the Orange Order began in Ireland. Beginning as a mutual aid society, the organization expanded to England and Scotland. Both officers and rank and file in the British military embraced the Orange Order. And with the expansion of the British colonial empire, the order spread throughout the world. Wherever British troops went in the world, they would take the ideals of the Orange Order, civil and religious liberty for all, loyalty to the British crown, 
and mutual help for each other and their families. The Orange Order traveled with the British troops to North America. There were Orangemen on the Plains of Abraham with General Wolfe in 1759 when Britain defeated France at Quebec. In Canada, the Orange Association was the first fraternal organization to welcome the working man into a lodge of like-minded people. There were Orangemen in the American colonies. When the American Revolution broke out in 1775, many Orangemen, sometimes called United Empire Loyalists, fought for Britain. Their land seized, their safety at risk, Loyalists fled to Canada. With them fled the Mohawks, who were military allies of the British. They left their ancestral lands in New York State to relocate in Ontario. Every year on the 22nd of May, the Mohawks of Tyendinaga celebrate their arrival as British Loyalists. They commemorate the event with the communion silver given to their nation by Queen Anne. They celebrate their Protestant heritage at Christ Church one of the handful of Queen's chapels in the world. The Mohawks of Tyendinaga, loyal soldiers, loyal Orangemen. To this day, Loyal Orange Lodge number 99 is a vibrant part of their community. This here is one of our drums we would take out on parade. And Louis Albert Miracle was one of our drummers British troops brought the Loyal Orange Order to Canada. Over the centuries, Britain rewarded soldiers and officers who fought her battles with land grants in Canada. What exactly did that mean to the development of this nation? British soldiers pioneered New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and the province of Ontario. They cleared the land and created farms out of the wilderness. They formed the small settlements that would become Canadian towns. And in these tiny settlements, they would build an Orange Hall. The Orange Hall became the heart of these towns. Before the churches and schools were built, the hall was often the first place of worship. It could be used as a classroom to educate the children. And it was a place of celebration. Wedding receptions, dances, and parties were held down at the Orange Hall. Most important of all, the regular Orange meetings formed the nucleus of the community. To belong to the Loyal Orange Order is to be a part of a brotherhood. By banding together in lodges, pioneers could work together to ensure a better life for themselves and their children. If a family lost a father through an accident or war, the Loyal Orange Lodge pledged to help the family in their time of need man could be assured that his widow would be supported, his fields harvested, and his sons educated, no matter what happened to him. It was at the Orange Hall that community projects were born. If a man needed help raising a barn or building a house, he could be assured of help. Before there was Medicare, there was the Loyal Orange Lodge. Some lodges, like London's Loyal Orange Lodge No. 805, became benefit lodges. At each meeting, members would drop a penny, or even five cents, into a milk bottle. This pool of money guaranteed that a doctor would be available for any member or his family. The Orange Lodge built the idea of mutual help and community responsibility right into the foundations of Canadian society. Orangemen also played a vital role in the political life of Canada. Orange militia were always ready to defend Canada. Many gave their lives in the service of their country. Canada was a tempting target for Americans, invigorated by their successful rebellion. During the War of 1812, Orangemen, loyal to Britain, fought off American incursions at places like Queenston Heights and Lundy's Lane. Orangemen opposed William Lyon Mackenzie's 1837 rebellion. Mackenzie became so exasperated by the entrenched family compact 
that he was ready to convert Canada into a republic like the United States. Orangeman and William Lyon Mackenzie enjoyed a tempestuous relationship. They could support his ideas on political reform, but they drew the line at disloyalty to Britain and joining the United States. Orangeman rose up to stamp out the rebels and drove William Lyon Mackenzie into exile in the United States. At the Battle of the Windmill, Orangeman under Ogle R. Gallon helped defeat a troop of marauding Americans dedicated to capturing Canada for the USA. Lord Durham, appointed by the British government, wrote the report which ultimately produced the reforms Mackenzie wanted. Loyal Orangemen supported a reform program that did not include disloyalty to Britain. It was at the Battle of the Windmill that the paths of two great Canadians crossed. Ogilar Gowan of Brockville, Grand Master of the Grand Orange Lodge of British America, was there with the 9th Provincial Battalion, which he himself had raised. Ogil Gowan tirelessly promoted and founded Orange Lodges laying the foundations for the great contribution the Orange Association was to make in the young country. A young lawyer, Sir John A. Macdonald, volunteered a pro bono defense for the invaders at their trial. John A. Macdonald, himself an Orangeman, would be the man who would help to bring Canada from a colony to an independent nation. Dedicated to the principles of civil and religious liberty, MacDonald negotiated a peaceful, amicable, and bloodless independence for the new nation of Canada. Like Prince William of Orange, he was able to forge alliances with diverse interests to create a unified nation. The constitution he hammered out with great care and effort bears a striking resemblance to the rules of order which the Orange Lodges used to govern their meetings. Ogilar Gowan developed these rules to enable Lodge members to deal with each other fairly and democratically. Orangemen learned politics in their Lodges. Many went on to contribute to the political life of Canada. The Loyal Orange Lodges were the cornerstones of their communities. All the people of the community used the Orange Hall as a gathering place, and the Orange men and women met there as well. I'm Norm Ritchie, the Grand Secretary of the Grand Orange Lodge of Canada, and I've been an active member of the association since 1952 when I first joined the lodge. Um, the Loyal Orange Association has uh, uh, had a lot of uh, credit to it. It's had some uh, great leaders whom I've had the privilege of knowing on a personal basis. I always looked at John Diefenbaker as being um, a statesman as opposed to being a politician and certainly one that was very loyal to the monarchy. Well, John Diefenbaker uh, was quite uh, an orange man in himself because he believed in the policies and the principles of the association. Uh, he was a great man, uh, a great orange man, and certainly a great prime minister. Children were always a focus for the Orange Lodge in Canada. In a harsh world, poor parents with large families would send their children out into the world to make their way. Some of these children were only 11 or 12. Sadly, many of these young people faced starvation and exploitation. Orange Lodges got together to form Protestant orphanages, where children could be cared for, educated, and apprenticed to a trade. These children grew up to take their rightful place in Canadian society, thanks to the help they got in their time of need. Orangemen would hitch up their wagons and drive through the streets and rescue abandoned children. Orange Benevolence still goes out to children in Canada today. Orangemen built their lodges on the idea of mutual help. They pooled their money to ensure that all would have access to medical care. Lodges would provide for the widows and orphans of Orangemen who lost their lives. But it took a brilliant man to take that concept to a higher level. Dr. Arunyadeka, whose name means heavens on fire, was an orangeman who rose to become the county grand master of Middlesex, Ontario. He was a Mohawk, a descendant of the proud native allies who fought for the British crown in the American Revolution 
and came to Canada with the United Empire Loyalists. This gifted man, Canada's first native medical doctor, had a vision. Instead of lodge members just taking care of their neighbors and their families, Dr. Arunyadaka conceived the idea of pooling money from all the lodges, making it possible to offer working men and women affordable health insurance. He spearheaded an ambitious insurance project for both the International Order of Foresters and the Orange Association. Dr. Arunyadaka was the first medical referee for Orange Insurance. Orange Insurance exists today and has a nationwide charter. It is still an expanding company providing flexible, affordable insurance protection for Canadian families. I'm Jim Bell, Secretary Treasurer and CEO of Orange Insurance. Orange Insurance has always been about people helping people. We've been providing affordable life insurance for Canadians for over 120 years. And today, we're doing it better than ever before. We're proud of our long association with Canadian Orangemen, but today, our coverage is not just for Orangemen. Whenever Canada has needed them, Orangemen answered the call. During the troubled times of World War I, Orange Lodges poured forth their men to fight on the side of England. Out of 600,000 Canadians in uniform, 80,000 were Orangemen. Orangemen were to give unstintingly of their lives in two world wars. An estimated 25% of all Canadian casualties in World War I were Orangemen. Many Orangemen were decorated and received the highest honors. The Orange Order would pay a heavy price. Colonel Ashmore Kidd, who fought in World War I, aggressively recruited Orange support in World War II. The staggering casualties suffered by the lodges, whose members never came back, reduced the influence of the Orange Order after the war. The Orange Lodge contributed more than just manpower. Colonel Kidd, as Grand Master, offered the Canadian government the use of Orange orphanages to house refugee children. The lodges raised money to finance mobile canteens for shipment overseas. Orangemen, then as now, were unfaltering in their loyalty to the British Crown and to the principles of civil and religious liberty for all. After the war, many lodges just died. Not enough members returned. The social and political climate changed. Social welfare and Medicare reduced the need for the services lodges provided. However, the lodges that remain still carry on the great tradition. In Loyal Orange Lodge No. 1 in Brockville, the original lodge of Ogle R. Gowan and Sir John A. Macdonald of Kingston, the good work goes on. Dean Ruslan, recording secretary of LOL No. 1, carries on the tradition of helping the community. Hi, my name is Dean Ruslan. I am the Worshipful Master of LOL No. 1 in Brockville. It's the first Orange Lodge in Canada. In um, January, our lodge presented a check to Elizabethtown Fire Department for $6,000. When Orangemen see a need, they answer it. In Aurelia, the Ladies' Orange Benevolent Association financed and constructed the Trillium Home for the Aged. This home has been passed on to the province for the use of all. In London, Ontario, Hackett LOL 805 supports the Hackett Thunder Band, a band that marches for and with disabled children. Young people are invited to join the band and regardless of their ability are provided with free uniforms and access to musical instruments and instruction. They carry on the great tradition of the Orange Marching Bands at festivities everywhere. Most of all they learn and they have fun. At Frankfurt, Ontario, Orangemen have built a low rental senior citizens residence. 
This kind of project has been adopted by the Orange Benevolent Associations across Canada. In Indian Head, Saskatchewan, the great tradition of help for children goes on today. This children's home is still there for the youth of the community. I'm Janice McBain and I'm the Executive Officer of the Orange Benevolent Society and of Hayes Haven Personal Care Home. Hayes Haven is a personal care home uh, run for seniors. There was a need to be filled in the community for, for senior care home and we thought that we would we would see what we could do in that area. So we built a facility with 10 rooms and they were filled very quickly and so we built on another 11 rooms and we opened those just in July 1st of this year and they're full. So we have a young girl that lives with us in the Orange Home and her great grandmother was residing in Hayes Haven and so that was a really nice um, opportunity for both of them to get together and spend time. Probably since I was three or four I started attending functions here. Uh, the Christmas parties uh, we started coming, playing in the tunnels and as a child, and then two years ago, the Hayes Haven opened, and that was named after my grandfather. He was one person that he really liked and really wanted something like that in the community. And this home was named after Von Hayes. Always said that he felt in order to render our circle of community service complete, we should be dealing and serving the senior community as well as the children. I began tutoring at the Orange Home with the children in 1988. We try really hard to give them everything that uh, anybody else would expect in, in a regular household and our kids benefit um, by being involved in all sorts of sports, activities, cubs, everything like that in the community. We just uh, had the children on a wonderful trip to Alberta and BC and it was sponsored by the Southern Independent Riders of Saskatchewan. They raffle a Harley Davidson motorcycle each year and the proceeds, they were one of the um, recipients of some of the proceeds there. People um, oftentimes just drop in and they see what we're doing and then they, uh, they send us a little small donation and say we'd like you to put this towards the kids for this or you know those kinds of things. Actually ours is considered custo custodial care. There is no government involvement and we never take over the um, custody of the children. The custody always remains with the family. The families place their children with us. Um, children are not placed here from social services. Sometimes if they uh, if the parents don't want to go that route, they will uh, ask for alternatives, and that's where we sometimes come in. Well, we, we know our limitations. We've been here for almost 80 years now, and we are not a facility for um, a closed facility. We are not therapeutic. We provide a loving environment for children who, who want to live in that sort of situation and, and who can adapt to the consistency and stability that we provide. We have had numerous people stop through. Um, while I've been here, I've watched a number of children you know, graduate from school, go off, get married, have children come back, visit, um, and, and share their, you know, their lives, what, what's happened since they've been gone. We have had different individuals come through. For example, one gentleman, he lived here when he was uh, throughout his teenage years. He went off to join the military and became a psychologist and, and quite, had quite a successful career in that area and he likes to come back and whenever he comes through he always stops there. Um, there are many people that I don't know personally but they will come to the town and visit friends that they have here still in the town. Okay, my name is William Johnston. I'm the Deputy Grand Master of the Grand Orange Lodge of Canada. And I'm on the board of the Orange Benevolent Society and also on the board of Hayes Haven. That's the seniors home here. And I'm here to help uh, with these 20,000 calendars that we're mailing out to all over Saskatchewan and other parts of Canada as well. And this brings in some money which helps to run this the home for children here. We got all, lots of people here who come every year to this event to stuff these calendars and we all enjoy ourselves, we have fun together. We've done tremendous things for children here and the parents and grandparents of those children uh, really appreciate that. And sometimes we have a old home day type of thing and people come back here who were reared up in this home and tell their story of how much they appreciated it and how they think about it today. Uh, we pass these out to people to let them know that we have a home here with children in it and uh, 
Hopefully they'll maybe give us a donation, but that's not the real reason. It's just to notify them that there's children here and a place for children. I, I think this is what it's all about, is people getting together from different parts of the province and Western Canada, and we enjoy being together. We bug each other a lot, but <laughs> it's, it's just a, it's a great fellowship. That's what it is. I'm James Fairman. I'm the Right Worshipful Grand Master of Saskatchewan. This home is open to uh, all people that, uh, regardless of race, color, creed, religion, etc. Being an Orangeman, what an exciting and rewarding journey this is. Hi there, I'm Dan McDonald. I'm the executive producer of this program, and I'm an Orangeman. My own father, a Canadian Orangeman, often reminded me of the value of belonging. I hope you found this program entertaining and informative, and just maybe it's brought back some fond memories for you of your family, its traditions, and its values. As for me, I'm proud to be a member of this great Christian brotherhood, the Orange Association of Canada. And in closing, let me share my father's words with you. When you're one of us, you really are one of us. I'm John Cottrell. I'm a registered nurse, and I'm proud to be an Orangeman. Hi there. My name is Tom Wright. I'm a journeyman power lineman and a member of Purple Hill 399. I'm proud of it for 30 years. Have you ever asked yourself, who speaks for me? I joined the Orange Association. They believe in traditional family values, and so do I.